Theme, is it possible for you to copy paste? Hi everyone, uh, I hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm not sure how many of us are together on this call. If I can get a number from the team here. Madam, I have already informed students and I have already put a message in official group. Just give me okay. two minutes. Yes, ma'am. No Just give problem. me two minutes. everyone uh, hope you're all doing well uh, i'm very very fortunate to get this platform to connect with you all um, i hope you're all keeping safe uh, i hope you're all taking all the necessary precautions and uh, today of course we've met to understand a project proposal how one can draft it um, what is important for project planning monitoring and evaluation i think as social workers uh, this is one of the basic, basic skills um, that we actually require. And this is something that goes a real long way. Uh, so with that note, I would actually want all of you all uh, to log into menti.com. Yeah, I hope uh, all those people online have menti.com. You can simply open it on a Google browser on your phone. Uh, you just need to type in www.menti.com and you need to put in the following code. You will be directed to a question there. Yeah, I want the uh, support team to confirm if we have students, uh, uh, you know, being able to log in to menti.com. Yeah, it's it's a platform where you can just put in the code and it is going to ask you 
uh, what according to you is a project or a program i'm quickly going to unshare my screen and share it again uh, to see what inputs you have log in to menti.com and your code for logging in is 15360948 uh i will type it in also in our facebook chat box the code is 15360948 yeah what according to you is a project and what according to you is a program yeah are you all able to log in to mentimeter if the team could just help me confirm no ma'am all right technical glitches in the digital world uh no problem at all uh you can in fact if you've joined through facebook you can help me understand uh, what uh a project according to you is or what a program according to you is yeah no problem no worries if you cannot join into mentimeter you can simply put in your comments on the facebook link what according to you is a project and what according to you is a program i'll wait it out for a moment till we get a few responses Uh, are the comments and notifications turned on can our participants comment yes ma'am okay i'll probably wait it out for another minute or go ahead with the brief madam madam someone has message project indicates okay yes let me read thanks nadeem that's a great help uh, project indicates single task and program is collection of projects beautiful that's bang on absolutely so when we talk about projects uh it is one project and it is program which includes a bunch of projects so when i talk about program an example could be the fact that i want to make sure that people know that there are certain laws and legislation for the common people that will really benefit them now this could be a program if i want to create projects for the same bit what i can do is one project could work entirely with youth to make sure that we have young leaders Yeah. one project could be to sensitize young school children and probably imbibe good values and the third project could simply be something like an rti helpline yeah so these are three projects uh, that have a definite outcome uh, that have a very very specific result we are working for and that is working to a specific timeline uh, all of these three could be a part of your program yeah and when i talk about a program the vision for a program is wider yeah just like you said it's 
program is a bunch of projects so projects need a very very specific result it needs a specific goal or uh, whereas program can have a broader vision yeah so since we've set in the context of uh, why actually we are working on projects right now um let us understand why we actually plan all right and again i would want some responses from your end if it's possible probably you know through comments or through chat box uh whatever is convenient uh, why do we plan uh, for example if you were asked to plan a college fest yeah why do you plan and how will you go about the whole plan yeah again i had of course put in a mentimeter here but since it is a challenge uh, it's absolutely okay you can probably give me one or two reasons of why we should plan Uh, to give a clarity. Okay. For a smooth functioning. For smooth functioning, absolutely. For bringing in clarity, I think that is what one of the responses we were getting. What else? Why do we plan? Madam Shala. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, madam. Someone has uh, leave a message. It helps to set the right goals. It sets objectives and standards for controlling, and it reduces the uncertainty. Absolutely. Shivani, yes. Thanks, Shivani, for sharing that. Uh, absolutely. So we try to mitigate. Uh, yani, ham jitne bhi uh, unpredictable moments hai, we try to predict it. We try to predict it. We try to lower the risk. Yeah. We try to make it foolproof. and we create a road map exactly why we need a plan in place now when i talk about a plan um uh, every plan or every project has a cycle all right now this cycle is a learning process it's a continuous learning process that happens um and uh, the whole process creates a continuous way of learning as well yeah uh, very very briefly we look into three elements one of course is planning which we spoke of why it's so important but planning actually involves a lot of other minor aspects right when i talk about minor aspects there are things like need assessment um there are things like stakeholder analysis and mapping now stakeholders are not simply people who are our beneficiaries uh, these are also probably our funding agencies uh these are also people who work on the project directly or indirectly yeah for example the example that i gave of working for laws or legislation for the common people now the stakeholders here could be of course a beneficiaries the common mass second government agencies yes because we could work closely with them right and the third would of course be our uh you know financing team our funders the agency yeah so these could be stakeholders and we need to make sure that we have analyzed every resource every stakeholder and mapped them correctly uh the second bit of your planning or uh, would be the project design and long framework right so what is your basic project design what are you planning to do when will you have your uh, you know implementation what are the timelines you are working with what are the specific objectives when we speak of a log frame it is nothing but actually stating in your objectives yeah it is putting in activities against your objectives making it smart uh, i'm sure all of you have heard of smart goals yeah it is specific measurable relevant time bound and achievable right so make sure that your log frame is your objectives and your aims which are very very smart uh mne plan so of course you need your monitoring and evaluation plan in place uh and a baseline study very very crucial because we as humans have a very very simple tendency of assuming things yeah uh very important for us to actually get connected to the ground realities which is why a baseline study is where you will get your numbers from we will move on to the second phase which is actually the implementation phase wherein you are actually implementing the plan you had made into your field so 
ड्यूरिंग द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन जब आप एक्टिविटीज कर रहे हैं उसके साथ साथ आपको मॉनिटरिंग करना है यू हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट यू हैव अ मिड टर्म इवेल्युएशन या Uh, and you have to make sure that you use different kinds of evaluations before you move into the final stage of your project cycle the third bit of course is about the final evaluation it is to reflect back uh, on what we did right what we did wrong what we learned from what could be avoided and what are the changes we can bring in so that we can make this whole project or model more sustainable Yeah, so that's where the third element of your evaluation will come into place. Um, now that we know a basic project cycle, let's deep dive a little bit into planning. Yeah. So far, uh, any questions? Uh, anyone who has any questions can put it in our chat box, and I'll move ahead with project planning. Yeah. Anyone has any questions so far? If no, if I get a nod, I'll move ahead. All right. It looks like no questions. Uh, moving ahead, let's look at various planning approaches. Now, when I talk about a project. uh we've spoken about what things are included in planning but jab ek problem aata hai to we look at the problem with different approaches similarly when we are working in a social environment when we are working in society uh there are certain things we react to there are certain things we are proactive about right uh in the same manner uh, there are various approaches very very simple uh a reactive approach is past oriented yeah for example there have been certain activities or incidents around where i'm living and i want to create some sort of a project to counter it an example i am reading a lot of molestation and rape cases around i'm very bothered with it and what i want to do next is probably bring out a project or create a project where i can connect with you know baseline workers where i can connect with um you know um teachers school principals where i can make students aware that what is uh, body body positivity what is right what is wrong what uh, is good touch bad touch so this is reactive yeah because i have seen cases around of molestation i want to make sure that the youth or the next generation is aware about it yeah and so that people speak up more yeah so this could be a reactive project which could be past oriented now an inactive project is present oriented inactive necessarily does not mean kuch kar nahi rahe it simply means we are doing what is required right now for example we have a lot of covid patients a uh, lot of them are facing a lot of issues with regards to their daily meals they've lost their jobs uh, they are isolated some of their family members are in the hospital they themselves are very very sick in home quarantine and we want to help somehow so an inactive planning approach in this situation would be simply providing meals now this is an inactive present oriented project so i will get a team along i'll see what ration i need i will put in a budget that you know daily i need 1500 meals one meal costs about 50 rupees so this is how i'm going to go about it so this becomes an inactive present oriented approach the third bit is a preactive now when i talk about preactive is i am predicting the future a lot of covid cases right now again uh, we could think of the fact that now we are hearing about another infection post covid yeah we are hearing about the black fungal infection so my preactive the predicting future approach could actually involve me doing awareness drives how to maintain hygiene how to preserve oral hygiene what are the precautions what are the tests you must take so all these things could be included in a preactive which is predict the future kind of a project the last bit here is proactive now here i could create a project that is going to support and create a different future 
for example i could create a plan or a project that actually works to create a greener and a more responsible generation uh, that benefits the environment yeah that stops global warming so i could create a project wherein individuals work to reduce the carbon footprint yeah because i want to create a certain kind of a future which is why my approach here will be proactive so before you set in to actually plan activities for your project realize ki ye char mein se aap kaun se approach ke sath kaam kar rahe hain and ye approach aapka aayega simply by doing three bits need assessment your swot analysis your situation and problem analysis yeah need assessment baseline surveys uh, articles you know literature all of this will help you do your need assessment um uh, focus group discussions all of this will help you understand what you need to actually do and not assume what is actually required yeah so all of these bits will help you actually figure out your approach swot analysis i'm sure you all have heard of uh, swot is nothing but strengths weaknesses opportunities and threat so when you are in um, probably you know an environment figure out what are the strengths of yourself of your team uh, of the resources that are at hand same thing with the fact about weaknesses what are the opportunities that are there and what are the threats this analysis will help you devise a project that will play to your strengths and also help you deal with weaknesses and threats right situation and problem analysis try and figure out every angle and not assume uh we will quickly move on to the next bit uh post this you can look at a project design and its outcome so now that i have a problem statement what am i going to do or how am i going to design my project what are the outcomes going to be like i'm also going to work on a monitoring and evaluation plan yeah and the last bit of course will be resources and stakeholders mapping that we spoke of briefly earlier and the very very important thing your budgets yeah um any questions with the planning bit so far i'll take a break for about few seconds and see if there are any questions madam yes ma'am i'd like i'd like to um request you to give more explanation about regarding budget and resources mapping because that is somewhere um, it becomes more difficult to understand what all things we will need in future and uh, what budget we can put for them absolutely so this bit uh, is it okay if i cover it in our project proposal drafting uh because there is very in depth details of budgeting and resource allocation in the drafting bit also as well would that be okay okay ma'am yeah i think it will not take about it will take about 15 20 minutes after this discussion uh we will uh, dive right into the project drafting and that is where i can answer this question of yours okay ma'am thank you yeah thank you for the question any other question shada ma'am yes yes go ahead madam when i was student you have also talked about or taught us about the pastel survey can you please sorry madam when i was student you have also talked about the pastel survey right right so madam can you please brief on sure. the pastel survey also sure absolutely so ideally it's one kind of a mapping just a second yeah uh it's one kind of a mapping which deals with a lot of other elements pestel is nothing but an acronym uh for what factors you must consider when it comes to political uh economical situations social situations technological situations your legal situations and your environmental situations so these six elements i can repeat it if you want uh make sure when you are devising a project you explore all aspects of where your project will be shadowing or what areas will it be creeping into 
and these six areas thank you nadeem for bringing it up uh, these areas would be political economical social technological legal and environmental so ye che jo aspects hai wo aap uh, not just in need analysis but you can also shadow it into your monitoring and evaluation plan you can also put it into your project design and outcomes plan you can also put it into your resources and stakeholder mapping as well as budgeting so what are the social resources you need what are the environmental resources you need or what are the environmental outcomes you are looking for yeah uh, you can add in all these aspects right um you can add in what are the legal aspects i need to know what framework or what legal assistance might i need right now or in the future if i want to register an organization what are the legal aids i will need so all of these things is basically nothing but your pistol analysis yeah does that answer your question nadeem yes ma'am all right superb uh so we'll move ahead now that we've laid a foundation of what project planning is very very briefly of course uh all of these that we've spoken about guys uh swot analysis hai need assessment hai project design and outcome hai pestel analysis hai all of these bits are actually deep in depth subjects in themselves so what i have done is just touched upon the subject for your reference uh you can always always come back to me uh we can speak about this you can read about this um, and it is it is really going to help you build perspective and do a deep dive before you actually begin a project so like i said i have just touched upon these aspects uh you might want to read a little bit more yeah need assessment is not limited to surveys swot analysis is not limited to only an analysis from your end yeah you need to do a swot analysis with your beneficiaries with your stakeholders so all of these are very very dynamic topics and uh, you must take in time before you actually start planning a project uh to do your own reading a little bit and of course um, i'm there you can connect with me through nadeem you can connect uh, with me otherwise as well uh, through my linkedin or my facebook page yeah uh we'll quickly move ahead in the interest of time i think we are 20 minutes into the program i would want to give in more time for questions later uh since we have spoken about um monitoring and evaluation uh i want to know from you all uh what does an academic year look like for you yani aapka pura saal kaisa dikhta hai your first day of college your first semester to the last final exam what does it look like uh we can have your comments on facebook or texts however it is possible what does your semester look like or what does your academic year look like team do we have any responses shall i ma'am yes yes please go ahead nandi so basically monitoring monitoring is a systematic process to track a program objectives toward reaching its goals whether the achieve which we have said it is being fully achieved or not okay thank you for the definition i don't want the definition i want to know what does your academic semester look like all right uh, i'm sure all of us can figure out a textbook definition uh, but i want to know ki hamara pura saal college mein kaisa dikhta hai what what does it look like do we have assignments or uh, do we have exams how is it what does it look like we have a theory to study and then we move towards um, implementing yeah. the, that to uh, through assignments field work and all the other activities and then we have exams how much we learned from all of them okay beautiful so we go from theory uh, to actually assignments and then we have exams my next question why do we have those assignments and why do we have those exams
go ahead there is no right or wrong team i am just wanting to have a dialogue so, so go ahead i think um, um uh, this uh, these assignments and this uh, academics thing are helping us to understand whatever we taught by our favorite teachers or professors right they improve us absolutely absolutely uh, very beautifully put thank you for your input we actually have these assignments and exams uh, to monitor and evaluate yeah we are doing this every single day without even knowing it so when you have your project uh, you are going to create checks uh and uh, you know you are going to come back on what it is that is going well for you what is not going well for you just like it would be an ordinary academic year yeah you would have assignments beach beach mein and then you would do a test beach mein so just like that for your project make sure you create some sort of a plan jahan pe beach beach mein you are putting in assignments beach mein you are putting in your tests yeah so try doing that and uh, actually that also takes me to my next question everyone had uh, in school do we did we have monitors in class yes ma'am yeah we did so what do the monitors do what were the monitors for ma'am they keep a track of everything like whether it is attendance or uh, whether it is you know reporting in everything to the teachers about Absolutely. the students and uh, all the activities going on in the class beautiful so there there it is uh, the monitoring definition that we heard before in a very very simplified form what our monitors did in our class is what monitoring is to our projects yeah we have to make sure that it is a routine activity this is not done once in a while ye ek ongoing activity hona chahiye theek hai this is done daily monthly or quarterly about information or indicators about ongoing activities it is recording whether right thing is being delivered to the right people at the right time the right way yeah just like shruti mentioned uh, monitoring is a continuous process that helps the project staff to know how things are going as well as giving early warnings of possible problems and difficulties so monitoring is very very crucial because it is the daily activity it is the ongoing activity that is going to help you create your checks and bounds so every time kuch problem ho raha hai through monitoring you will be able to figure out okay see this is not working i need to change my strategy i need to change my plan i need to redo this yeah um tools for monitoring have all of you been writing daily reports in your field work do you all write yes ma'am yes yes ma so that is a very crucial tool for monitoring yeah if you go back and look and read your own reports you will do a lot of reflective learning you will see where the challenges began from yeah even if it is as personal as not getting along with a colleague or the agency aapko wo clearly aapke writing mein aapke reports mein dikhega that is nothing but a way of monitoring that there is a challenge and now i need to overcome it and make sure that there is some way i can get with it yeah your daily reports your progress against the baseline remember we spoke of need analysis and swot analysis and pestel analysis and all of it basically monitoring is going back to where you started almost daily or monthly seeing how far you've come yeah so your progress against your baseline study uh, will also be a tool for monitoring the other bit could be a monthly reviews yeah where you sit in a group have a you know a brainstorming session take in opinions this is where we are which probably the legal department is facing some challenge they will shoot it out the finance is saying listen we've already spent x some x amount of budget we need to make sure that we uh, in the next quarter not spend this much all of these things are basically your monitoring tools so you could have your focus group discussions you could have your quarterly reports which is a culmination of all that happened uh, you could have your team meetings or hurdles and all of these bits will help you monitor um your progress so far yeah uh we will move on to evaluation evaluation is synonymous to your year end exams year end exams kyun hota hai to finally figure out have you passed the semester or the year or not yeah and that's exactly what your evaluation for your project is going to do 
या इट इज अ पीरियोडिक असेसमेंट यानी ये हर रोज नहीं होता है uh, ये एक बार होता है ये हम या तो दो टाइम करते हैं एक होता है फॉर्मेटिव और दूसरा होता है समेटिव फॉर्मेटिव इवेल्युएशन हम तब करते हैं जब एक प्रोजेक्ट के बीच में हो या वी आर राइट इन द मिडल ऑफ अ प्रोजेक्ट एंड वी वॉन्ट टू इवेल्युएट इफ देर आर एनी चेंजेस वी वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग इन या we want to make sure that we are relevant uh, that the performance is up to mark we are efficient there is an impact which is expected and unexpected as well and we are on track with it so your formative evaluation is help is going to help you form the next phase of your project yeah which is why it is called formative and ye project ke beech mein hoga dusra type of evaluation ho sakta hai ek summative evaluation yeah when i talk about a summative evaluation uh, it is nothing but a summary of the whole year yeah so summative evaluation is about providing evidence providing evidence of outcomes of targets of what has been achieved uh, what were the reasons if something has not been achieved as well yeah what were your challenges uh, you could also determine effectiveness कि हम जो करने के लिए निकले थे हमने वो किया है या नहीं किया है जो हमारा प्लान पर्पस था जो हमारे ऑब्जेक्टिव्स थे किस हद तक हमने एक्सेप्ट किए हैं या फिर यू नो अचीव किए हैं द सेकंड बिट इज आल्सो अबाउट सिग्निफिकेंस सो डिड योर प्रोजेक्ट मेक अ सब्सटेंशियल कंट्रीब्यूशन टू द डेवलपमेंट जो हम एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे थे उसको चेंज लाने का हैज इट गॉट द सब्सटेंशियल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन सिग्निफिकेंस विल ऑल्सो मीन when i started off it was very very important but is it relevant now at the end of an year how important is it is it relevant now does it make sense now is what your evaluation is going to help you understand the last bit is of course measuring efficiency this is one bit all your donors and your funders are very very going to be interested in uh, it is about did we achieve a satisfactory cost benefit ratio don't worry about this too much the techno uh, the technical terms is nothing but have we done what we set out to do as promised to see if i've said that i want to do 100 sessions in an year have i completed the 100 as per the 3 lakh rupees that i ask for it's simply that could we have accomplished a purpose at a lower cost now efficiency will not only mean costs and money uh, but it will also mean have i used my time appropriately have i used my resources appropriately i have a team of 3 people have all three been used appropriately um have all of them been able to upskill have has there been a growth for them so all your resources will come into measuring efficiency now how do you do evaluations very very uh, obvious impact assessments now impact assessments are nothing but actually your baseline and your end line survey जो आपने बेसलाइन करते टाइम नीड एनालिसिस करते टाइम द नंबर्स यू स्टार्टेड विथ एंड द नंबर्स यू आर टुडे विथ सो इफ आई एम लुकिंग एट इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट एंड इन द स्टार्टिंग ऑफ द ईयर आई आस्ट फॉर से 15 लैक्स टू डू 25 वर्कशॉप्स इन स्कूल्स 25 वर्कशॉप्स इन कॉलेजेस फाइल अबाउट हंड्रेड आर एंड कन्वर्ट दैम इन टू एक्चुअल चेंज एंड प्रोबेबली द फोर्थ बिट कुड बी uh create awareness amongst or create uh you know uh, congresses within youth to take leadership in their areas so this is what i set out to do at the year end i was given 15 lakhs to do these four things have i been able to do it if not how far have i been able to do it yeah so your baseline and your end line surveys comparison between the two is your impact assessment yeah here is where you will be able to get tangible numbers tangible meaning things that you can measure things that you can actually show percentages in things that you can have numbers to out of 25 i have done 21 workshops i could not do 3 because there were vacations no one is going to hold you up for saying that ek do cheeze nahi hui hai but you need to have your reasons and when you are doing an impact assessment your reasons will fall in line yeah so impact assessment is one way your baseline end line surveys are one uh, main measure of evaluation just simply could be cost versus your achievements yeah that is exactly what impact assessment is um 
with that we are almost um, we've touched upon planning bits we've touched upon uh, you know uh, the monitoring bit and touched upon the evaluation bit um i would i think we have about um half an hour now uh, i will take about 5 minutes for all of us to understand why is it important uh, again i will try and put in mentimeter if it's possible if people can log in and help me with their responses on why is monitoring and evaluation important to you i'm going to unshare my screen and uh, probably share it again Yeah. All you need to do is log in to Mentimeter. You'll be able to see it on the screen in a bit. The code is the same. I would want to give this one more try. Yeah. uh there are about seven things on the screen i want you to rank this in the order of preference aapko kyun lagta hai monitoring or evaluation important hai you simply need to log into www.menti.com and you can put in the code and it will direct you to this question in case you can't log in again what we can do is if the options are visible to you um uh, we can have one or two responses on the chat box or even um through comments um which ones do you think are very very important for monitoring and evaluation do we have any responses yet not yet ma'am all right so if anyone would want to go in uh, if there are any comments or messages that you all have received um we can take those as well uh if you had to rank in order of preference okay we have one response that says the first one is to monitor efficiency of different components and the second one is to evaluate the extent to which the objectives are achieved absolutely all right let's see if we have any more responses team if you have got any chat messages also please go ahead feel free to share them or if you have any opinions about this as well go ahead nisha has left the message first and six first and sixth is it yes, project madam. guidelines for future okay and monitor efficiency we have received about three inputs uh, the most important thing so far remains at monitoring efficiency of different components uh, the second has now moved to identifying problems early on and providing timely solutions the third is uh, improving project design fourth is constant feedback the fifth is okay now we have a change there we've got fourth uh, evaluation uh, evaluate the extent to which the objectives are achieved the sixth one is keep a track of the progress and the seventh one seems to be providing guidelines for the future okay we'll probably wait it out for um 
minute more if we have any more responses and we we can close on this i think so the most uh, important reason why we monitor or evaluate is to monitor efficiency of different components it seems all right no changes so far this remains intact probably see if we have any more responses or move ahead all right so i think we've got more or less the idea of why monitoring and evaluation are important ideally all seven are equally important yeah because every aspect that is there on the screen right now is going to help you plan your next action is going to help you keep a track or of the course that you are on is going to help you tweak wherever required so monitoring and evaluation is very very important to monitor efficiency of different components yes identify problems early and provide timely solutions yes improve project design as we go yes evaluate the extent to which the objectives are achieved yes constant feedback keeping track of progress provide guidelines for future projects yes yes and yes yeah all seven here are why monitoring and evaluation are very important yeah it's uh, we don't only set out to do or implement a project planning does not or a project cycle does not end there yeah uh if we had to plan a college fest college fest ke next day do we all sit together and see kitna budget spend hua kiska kya settlement baki hai uh kaun si kaun si cheezon mein acha review mila kaun si activities bahut acche se ho gayi kaun si activities mein bahut problem thi kahin pe guest speaker the and we could not handle something yeah do we sit the next day and have these discussions yeah in case you want to put in a chat or you want to say yes no maybe you can go ahead and do that all right so the whole point is that your monitoring and evaluation is very important not just to make sure that all the components are working effectively but to make sure that every single aspect of the implementation is on point not just today but continues to be on point for the future so it helps you be significant it helps you be relevant yeah and with that uh, we will close in on monitoring and evaluation yeah we will dive right into uh i think one of the tools that are going to help all of you all um a long long way is actually drafting your project proposal um now here currently i'm only going to take you through the steps of project proposal drafting but uh, i will be sharing a handout uh, with the team today immediately after our call and uh, it's a word document so in case after the presentation i'm able to display the word document as well i will take you through it um it is nothing but it is details of every step that we are going to speak of all right and with every step it also has a note of how many pages to some extent do you need to fill in for that particular content all right so i've tried to made it as objective um and as uh, you know hands on as possible so i'm going to share that with you as a handout but i'm going to take you through the steps now all right uh, so when we are drafting the proposal now that we know what we want to do uh, we've spoken of how we are going to monitor we've spoken of how we are going to evaluate all those things actually need to go into your proposal now proposal drafting is one of the most important activities not because it's an important document but it is one document that is going to convince your funders uh, if you are capable of you know actually implementing what you are setting out to do it is going to be one document uh, that is going to not just give your funders your plan 
इट इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू हेल्प योर फंडर्स अंडरस्टैंड कि आपने कौन सी हद तक आपका रिसर्च किया है to what extent have you studied the whole situation to what extent are you aware of your resources of the situation yeah so your pro- proposal draft is something that is not just going to fetch you money uh, but it is going to help the funders believe in you believe in your project all right uh, with that uh, we will move on to the first step of a project proposal first of course is your project summary now we talk about a project summary this could be about a page um wherein you actually put in what you set out to do so aapke objectives ho sakte hain aapka organization ka thoda sa background ho sakta hai uh, you can put in why you are doing this what you are looking out to do so it's a summary remember you're going to talk about these aspects in detail in the future segments but it is a start so it is a highlight right so make sure you put in project summary me things like your objectives what are the kind of activities you are looking for what are the changes you are looking at yeah the next step is adding in your organizational background and capacity yeah when was the organization established how many years have you been working in this field this is where you establish your credibility yeah you tell them if you have resources in place to help you yeah you tell them if you have interns you tell them if you have uh you know on roll staff members project managers all of that will come in here the third step very important project objectives and expected results now project objectives this is not just a statement this has to be a very very tangible statement ab jab main tangible bol rahi hu we have spoken of smart yeah make sure every objective is a smart objective it should have a timeline uh it should be achievable it should be exact it should be specific so all of these things must be included in every objective it's not that ek objective apne smart rakha hai and dusra basic hai ya fir vague hai don't do the mistake of doing that make sure every objective is smart it has a timeline attached to it yeah and of course expected results that these are the objectives i am planning to achieve this by this time and this is the expected change that i'm looking at or that i'm working for be very specific uh be as expressive and candid as possible the fourth step is description of activities now that we have our objectives and results your description of project activities is actually how and what so answer these two questions how are you going to do it and what are you going to do is what your description is going to be so the example that i gave we are going to do workshops we are going to do campaigns we are going to file rtis all of these could be the description of the project activities now here again not just paragraphs don't just put in uh i'm going to do uh activities that are going to do uh, you know awareness or that are going to spread awareness but put in how many so put it in a proper table 25 sessions three campaigns across one year uh, 100 rtis that will have a response and closure yeah so make sure that your project activities are also specific and have numbers attached to it because again your proposal is somewhere also your baseline this is going to help you in impact assessment you set out to do x and you've done y so you will be able to sort of look at the difference when you are doing that the sixth uh, sorry the fifth step is the implementation plan and the time frame now here how are you going to do it when are you going to do it yeah so you so when and how will also come in here we'll move on to the sixth step is plan to ensure stakeholder participation ab jab main bol rahi hu stakeholder again like i said in the beginning it is not just our beneficiaries it is also all the other departments that we might work with it is also the funders we might work with so project ke har step mein kaun sa stakeholder involved hoga aur kaise hoga kya karke involve hoga so their activities their responsibilities and how are they involved in the project every stakeholder so for this you have to actually begin with your stakeholder list 
who are the people involved in the project and then come up with their roles responsibilities and their participation yeah uh, moving on to step 7 this is about risks to successful implementation hum jab bhi koi cheez karte hain to hum kuch assumptions ke sath karte hain yahan pe aap aapke wo assumptions dalenge ke what is the risk to successful implementation natural calamity or probably the fact that there are vacations or you don't have enough team members to do your foot survey yeah so these things could be rolled into your implementation risks very important step because jab aap impact assessment karenge to jo cheeze aapse complete nahi hui hai yeah those things should actually have been covered in the risk plan because that's where your funders will come and say that these are the things you had mentioned ye third thing kahan se aa gaya how did you not think of this before why did you not plan for this before yeah so make sure that you study your surroundings well you do a pestle analysis here you do a swot analysis here and you figure out what are the risks that could stop you from doing those 100 rtis that could stop you from doing those campaigns that could stop you from taking the 25 sessions all round study karke come up with assumptions and risks yeah the step 8 is about your manpower requirement now here aisa necessary nahi hai ki every time hamare paas 100 log ho and hame 100 log ka kaam hai only for the campaign jahan pe shayad humko ek street play karna hai jahan pe humko possibly uh, you know bahut sara resources mobilize karna hai ki pamphlets dena hai all those things for those days you can ingo involve manpower requirement of say 100 volunteers you can only need two project managers yeah someone who looks at rti and someone who can look in college and school together yeah so make sure that you are able to uh, be reasonable with your manpower requirement you don't need a big team always to necessarily have a successful project see what are permanent roles see what are temporary roles yeah so weigh that out when you are putting in your manpower requirements very crucial because again um salaries remuneration your honorariums will get affected and that will affect your budget right so even if you have volunteers for a day if you have say 100 volunteers per volunteer you might at least give them 50 to 100 rupees for food snack travel that will also come into your budget so very very important for you to weigh out your manpower requirement and for the period that you might need it for yeah um evaluation plan and indicators so what are your checks going to be i have done this activity successfully how can you say that what are the measures you identified against it to say ke ha ye acche se hua hai yeah it's not we are not going to take you on your word you need to make sure that there is some sort of a checks and balance there for you to compare it with what are your indicators yeah 100 rti file kar diya but how is it successful has that one rti seen you know the end and the action has been taken 100 mein se kitno mein action liya gaya hai so your indicators need to be very specific for your success parameters ek project ko aap successful batayenge uske liye kya kya indicators hain so you need to spell out everything yeah your 10th step very very crucial and also overlooked aspect which is sustainability right i gave you an example of uh, food for covid patients now is this particular initiative sustainable for the next 2 years will i be able to do this for the next 2 years or will it be relevant for the next 2 years i'm guessing no because it's the current need so that particular model might not be very sustainable i need to make sure that jab main project ek saal ka de rahi hu mere paas ek saal ke baad ka bhi plan in place ho how am i going to keep it relevant how am i going to make sure that ek saal ke end mein maine jo change laya hai ye change constantly chalta rahe it's not a one time activity people are not going to give you money or create budgets for a one time intervention they will say i want to see a change and this is where the change comes from your sustainability plan 
is going to extend your project beyond the time frame that you have created it will make sure ki aapne itna ek saal mein jo effort dala hai wo ek saal ke baad bhi zinda hai wo ek saal ke baad bhi continuously chal raha hai and it is relevant yeah so sustainability very often it is undermined it is overlooked but it is one of the major factors that will pull your funders towards you yeah so make sure you have a very strong sustainability plan in place yeah budget very 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 important uh, all of that we've done will not happen without the green notes uh, so yes very important certain aspects you must include uh, here i will also take in the question that we had earlier about budgeting uh certain aspects of budgeting would be making sure that you count for all your activities you have project expenses uh you have honorariums and salaries included uh you have your continuous or repetitive or constant expenses which could be your office expenses you could have your asset expenses which could be things like computers printers office and all of those things uh you could also have contingency expenses yani agar kuch cheez plan ke hisab se nahi gayi and i need to spend a little bit more i can add in contingency expenses and of course your admin expenses which should be below 20% ab hum contingency ki bhi jo baat kar rahe hain wo pura project proposal agar main 15 lakhs ka kar rahi hu to mera contingency should only be 2 or 3% of the 15 lakhs okay i can't say 15 lakhs ka project hai and usme se 7 lakhs hai na contingency hai ki what if my plan doesn't work i will take money from this particular uh you know category that can't happen you have to have a very very specific budgeting done you have to sit with your accounts team all of us might not have uh the proficiency to do this you know probably look at the balance sheets look at the pnl pnl is of course profit and loss statement of the organization um look at the donations look at the corpus funds um uh, but you must sit with other stakeholders and the other stakeholder here is your accounts team and actually create a budget where your contingency is at least only 2 to 3% and your admin costs are below 20% of the full project expenses so if your project is for 15 lakhs your admin expenses should not be more than 3 lakhs 3 to 5 lakhs yeah that is tops so make sure it's that it's below 20% yeah that is what uh, it is about budget um of course uh, you know asking donors to give in money or looking for fundraisers is not a part of your project proposal you should never put that in but this is just a heads up if you are doing a fundraiser there could be two different kinds of donations you are looking for this is just few extra tips that i'm giving in um uh, before we actually close this and i'll show you the word document that i have for you that will take you through all these 11 steps in detail um but there are two things that we ask donation for one is of course your uh, project activities so yani jo paisa aa raha hai direct project activity mein ja raha hai yeah so anything you want to do with regards to your objectives that goes into your project activities and that money can directly be put into the field yeah the second is a corpus donation now corpus donation is only and only done on two conditions this is done to build the asset of a organization and isme do conditions ye hai ki aap ek to aapke donor se written permission lete hain कि आप जो पैसा दे रहे हैं वो कॉर्पस डोनेशन के लिए जाएगा ठीक है यू नीड इट इन राइटिंग द सेकंड कंडीशन इज दैट वो जो सम इकट्ठा हो रहा है कॉर्पस फंड जो इकट्ठा हो रहा है वो कॉर्पस फंड आप प्रोजेक्ट एक्टिविटी में नहीं डाल सकते हैं ये कॉर्पस फंड है तो आप इसको एसेट बिल्डिंग के लिए ही यूटिलाइज कर सकते हैं अब वेन आई एम सींग एसेट बिल्डिंग इट इज इफ यू आर गोइंग टू बाय एन ऑफिस if you are buying a vehicle yeah if you are buying some sort of an asset that is when you can use your corpus fund or else you cannot okay so these are two main conditions but what the third thing you can do is corpus funds ko agar aapne fd bana diya hai 
तो आप वो एफ में से जो इंटरेस्ट आ रहा है आप वो इंटरेस्ट प्रोजेक्ट में यूटिलाइज कर सकते हैं या सो दिस इज जस्ट फ्यू टिप्स फॉर यू टू रिमेम्बर वेन यू आर वर्किंग विथ डोनेशन वेन यू आर वर्किंग विथ फंडिंग एंड दीज आर दिलेवन स्टेप्स ऑफ ड्राफ्टिंग अ प्रोजेक्ट प्रपोजल I will want to quickly show you a word document. Uh, please let me know if my screen is visible. Um, I understand we are right on time, and I have a minute. Uh, I'll quickly take you through the word document. Yeah, I can see that it's visible. Um, this word document is going to be a handout for all of you. I'm going to send it across to the team. so that this helps you to draft your project proposals well uh, this also has page wise or what needs to be included uh, so this is very very objective like i mentioned and uh, it's exactly what we've spoken about yeah so it has project summary it could be about one page it has to be a brief write up about key points your organizational background is going to be the nature of the organization the purpose core activities what is your approach what is the legal status who are the key stakeholders who who is the management yeah this could also be one page your project objectives and your expected results needs to have a problem statement needs to have specific objectives rational and specific results like i said this is one page but make it as tangible as possible a uh, description of your project activities so make sure that this is as elaborate and as candid as possible make sure you're answering what who when where yeah your implementation plan and time frame maximum two pages this could also be under a page but this has to be uh, everything and anything under the sky that is going to be included from the start to the end yeah plan to ensure your stakeholder participation about half a page of who are your stakeholders project planning and design mein unka kitna uh, involvement hoga project in implementation mein kiska kitna uh, involvement hoga project monitoring evaluation mein kiska kitna involvement hoga yeah so make sure you list your stakeholders and divide them as per three things that are mentioned on your screens risks to successful implementation put in your key assumptions put in what could go wrong and don't assumptions when i say it is not just uh, out of the air but it is assumptions out of your study of current feasibility current project planning current situations and what you can anticipate yeah so again this does not have to be things like someone is getting married it has to be very very actual things like a natural calamity like probably vacations in the school and things like that manpower requirement we've of course spoken about this in detail your plan for recruitment development allocation and utilization of human resources how you are going to do it role clarification kon kya karega job description very very particular and what is the actual structure so what does uh, your management look like what are your supervisors and what does your organization look like your evaluation plan of course your indicators uh, you can use various log frames um log frame analysis can be done and we've spoken about this a little bit in the impact assessment bit your log frame is nothing but you are going to divide your outcomes and outputs as per your um, results that you're looking for yeah sustainability next steps one saal to ho gaya ab kya is what you're going to write in sustainability has to be about 0.5 pages and your budget uh, again answering the question we had earlier should be realistic don't inflate costs where not required uh, remember people know how much stationery will cost people will know how much laptops cost yeah um, if a current role or a particular role does not require uh, an expert laptop it requires a basic laptop people know the costs so do not inflate costs when it comes to these elements yeah uh you do not want to send out a message that you are frisking or you are trying to bloat or exploit your funders so very very crucial make sure it is realistic uh make sure all costs associated with managing and administering the project are involved so involve stakeholders here you can also involve your funders here you can keep going back coming forth with your accounts team have a three way conversation involve remuneration honorariums look at the capital requirement capital requirement is assets computers printers 
recurring costs of his rent electricity stationaries all of these could be recurring costs प्रोजेक्ट ऑपरेशनल एक्सपेंसिस तो एक्चुअल जो आपकी एक्टिविटीज है प्रोजेक्ट की उसके क्या एक्सपेंसिस होंगे कंटेंजेंसीज लाइक आई सेड इफ समथिंग डजेंट वर्क आउट आई नीड से ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड साइड पे सो मेक श्योर दैट इट इज नॉट मोर देन टू और थ्री परसेंट एंड द लास्ट बिट इज योर एडमिन कॉस्ट दीज मस्ट बी बिलो ट्वेंटी परसेंट या डू नॉट इनफ्लेट योर एडमिन कॉस्ट दिस इज वन ऑफ द रीजन अ लॉर्ड ऑफ प्रपोजल्स गेट रिजेक्टेड बिकॉज Your admin cost is way more than your project expense, which means के आप actual activity में कम पैसा डाल रहे हैं आप लोगों को manage करने के लिए ज्यादा पैसा डाल रहे हैं क्या सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द रीजन वाई अ लॉट ऑफ प्रोजेक्ट इवन दो दे आर वेरी साउंड वेरी रेलिवेंट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बट दे गेट रिजेक्टेड सो मेक श्योर दीज थ्री थिंग्स आर बैलेंस्ड मेक श्योर योर बजट हैज ऑल ऑफ दीज हेडिंग्स so you can divide your budget into part a b c d and have all of these elements in it yeah and of course have a total and you can close a budget at about maximum 3 pages it could be about 1.52 pages as well yeah and um, so yeah that's about it from my end i hope this has been useful uh, i hope uh, you all have benefited from this a little bit and if there are any questions i'm open to it and just now yes. uh, in, in, in the very first year, um in the budget for how many uh, years like you can put your because initially the cost might be